Hey there, I'm Pastor Luis Medrano, and I am so grateful that you're allowing me to begin this day with you. How about we prepare our heart, our mind, and our soul to hear God's voice by simply participating in a short breathing exercise. It's going to help ground us and prepare us to listen carefully. So what I'm going to ask you to do is simply breathe in through your nose for three seconds. Hold it for three seconds, and then exhale through your mouth. Are you ready? Awesome, let's do this. Together now, breathe in through your nose. Hold it. Now exhale. Wow, that felt really good. Let's do it one more time. Let's breathe in. Let God's life-giving breath fill your lungs. Let it rejuvenate your body. Hold that breath. Now exhale. Oh, that breath, what a great reminder that each and every day is a blessing from God and every breath is a gift. You know, not everybody gets to take that breath and you and I do, and we need to be grateful for it. It helps us enter into this day with a sense of humility and ready to hear what God has to say. So let's listen to his voice. Let's be ready to hear him. Hey everyone, I'm Pastor Luis. This is the second installment in a five-part series focusing in on God's habits of grace. Habits of grace comes from a concept, the idea that God wants to influence us. He wants to invade our life. He wants to teach us, mature us, draw us closer to Him. He wants to spiritually transform us. And He does that through His means of grace. There are various, many means that God uses to accomplish this. But one of those means is the Bible, the Scriptures. He uses the Bible to communicate to speak, to teach us. That way, through the Bible, we are empowered and equipped to obey Him. So our job is to have a habit of grace, that we would come to the Bible, that we would read it and spend time. And as Joshua 1.8 says, day and night meditate upon His Word. Focus our attention. Give time to the study of God's Word. Now, last week we began, and I shared with you how I do that. And we're looking specifically at Psalm 27. Yesterday we looked at verses 1 through 3, and this is how we did it. We read the text. We read the three verses. Now, you, if you're anything like me, you need to read it more than once because there's so much I overlook. So I will slowly read through the text. Secondly, I'm going to analyze the text looking for ideas or words that are being repeated. Because if God repeats something, it's probably worth giving it some attention. And then I ask three very specific questions. What does the text say about me? What does it say about me? Secondly, what does the text teach me or say about God, about Jesus, about the Holy Spirit? What does the text say about me? What does the text say about God? And the third question is, in light of those two things, how does God want me to respond? What does he want me to do? And so we, we did that yesterday, and we're going to do it again. Would you join me in Psalm 27? We already read verses 1 through 3 for today's lesson. We're going to read verses 4 through 6. So open up your Bible, Psalm 27. We're going to look at verses 4 through 6. Allow me please to read it to you one thing I have asked of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple for he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble he will conceal me under the cover of his tent he will lift me high upon a rock and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy and will sing and make melody in the Lord Psalm 27 verses 4 through 6 
Now that we've read it, look for things such as repeated words. Now, when I'm analyzing this verse, I, I noticed something that stuck out to me. It, it may not be a repeated word, but it is a repeated idea. For instance, he says in the text that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. And he wants to be in his temple, that he will hide in his shelter, that he will be under the cover of his tent. Um, yeah, over and over. He says that word tent again. So he speaks about a house, a temple, a shelter, a tent. So it's not a repeated word, but it's a repeated idea. This text is presenting you and me the house of God, wherever God is. His house, his temple, his shelter, his tent. That's, that's a repeated word. Now, how, how does that play into this? I don't know yet but I recognize that repetition, so it will play into my interpretation or my meditation. So let's ask the questions. What does it say about me? Well, I ask of the Lord. I seek after him. I'm looking at all the things that I want to do, such as I want to dwell in the house of the Lord. I am hidden in his shelter. My head gets lifted up. So what does it say about me is that I want to go. Wh whatever we want to call his house, his, his temple, his shelter, his tent, um, wh whatever that is, I want to be there. I want to be in the presence of God. That's what it says about me. What does it say about God? I look at verse 5 and he says, God, he will hide me. He will conceal me. Um, he will offer. And, and so I'm learning that I want to be in his presence. I want to be in his house. What does it say about God? He wants me in his presence. He wants me in his house. Well, okay, now I've learned. What does it say about me? What does it say about God? Now, what does God want me to do in light of this? Well, I look at verse 6. Now that he's let me in, I have sacrifices with shouts of joy. I, I am to be exuberant and joyful, grateful, I would assume. And that I come singing and making melody to the Lord. It, this sounds like gratitude. This sounds like me saying, I really want to be in your presence. I really want to be in your house. You have opened the doors. You let me in. You hide me. You shelter me. You bring me in. And that evokes from me praise and worship, sacrifices and singing and making melody. See, we're analyzing the text and we're using those questions. Now, I want to take the next step. We know the third question. In light of this, what does God want me to do? Well, he wants me to, number one, have a spirit of gratitude. Have joy. Be happy. You know, really be happy that the doors are open to experience him in a very positive way. I'm not supposed to come to God ridden with guilt, broken with shame, but with exuberance, with sacrifices of joy, and with songs in my heart, making melody. He wants me to be grateful. Now, there's something else here when, you know, because of my understanding of history and, and other lessons that I've taken over time, I want to share with you just an insight. And all of us have insights. All of us have insights that come from experience. This is one that I have. Understanding Middle Eastern hospitality. Um, this goes to Judaism, Arabic, all of the Middle Eastern or, or the Orient uh, traditions. There is a heavy emphasis on hospitality. I honestly believe that here in the West, we are so far, we, are, we come so short of understanding and appreciating hospitality. It's kind of like what we saw in the book of Genesis chapter 18 where Abraham is in the desert. It says these three men approached him and Abraham says, please strangers, come sit down under the shade of the tree. Let me bring you some drink. Let me bring you some water. Let, let me take care of you. This 
idea of hospitality. It's Lot in the book of Genesis when his, the, these strangers come to his home and he brings them in and he shelters them. This is the beauty of this Middle Eastern hospitality. You can be a stranger and you will be invited in. You can be wanted, you could be hunted down by enemies, but if you come into a person's home, the homeowner is obligated to feed you, to give you water, and to provide you with security and safety. No one in this community is going to harm you while you are under their care. You know, I don't know if you saw this movie, um, but it was based on a U.S. Special Forces soldier that was caught behind the lines and he ended up trying to run away from enemies, from terrorists. And he ended up staying in, his, in this little town. The movie's called Lone Survivor. And even though the enemies knew where he was, the town that did not know him, that did not share his face, they, their, his faith, they may not have appreciated his politics, because they brought him into town, they were obligated to protect him. And the only reason that he's alive today was because of their hospitality. And there seems to be, I mean, I think about this soldier. He could have been killed, but because of the hospitality of these people, because they brought him into their home, because they gave him drink and food and medical care, a phone, anything he needed, I think he was singing melodies with his heart. I think he was joyful in his heart. And, and I think that's the picture that I'm seeing here, that we are running because we live in a time of trouble. There are enemies that are coming behind us and we desperately want to get in. We want to get into the house, the temple, the shelter, the tent. We need to be in God's presence where we find security and safety and water and food. And God opens the door and he brings us in and he says, you can be secure. I have got you covered. It's just, you know, this is what I came up with after thinking and pondering. Why is it this guy wants to get into the temple? And, and why is he singing merriment and joy? I, I think that's the picture that is being painted here. In a time where enemies want to do us harm, you can run to the Lord. He's our high tower, remember from verse 1 through 3. And we find refuge in Him, and He can take care of us. So, that's my reflection. I, I shared it with you. I'm going to share that in my prayer to God. I'm going to write it in my journal. Um, and I think what I'm going to be writing in my journal, I actually already started. I was writing here, what did I learn about you, God? That you are merciful, graceful, generous, inviting, faithful, kind, and protective. And the more of these attributes that I see, the more beautiful you become to me. So I'm just thinking, I'm just journaling, I'm just writing. I'm responding to the text. But on that third question, and here's the point for today's lesson, where the scripture you know, gives us an opportunity to, to, to respond. Um, we want to be able to say, in light of this, how am I supposed to respond? Now, no matter what your conclusions, your journaling, your reflections are, here is something very, very simple for you to use for your application. Um, it's four letters, S-P-E-C. Now, as you can tell, I watch a lot of movies. There's one movie that I really like. It's called, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? And in that movie, there's a scene where these three men who are, you know, fugitives from the law, they come up to a relative's home and they're chained one to another. And the relative looks at him, got a piece of a hay in his mouth. He looks at him and he says, Speck, you want them chains knocked off? <laughs> I'm not a good actor. But I, I love how he said it, speck you want them chains knocked off, that word speck. What he's saying is, I expect that you want those chains to be taken off. And, and on that third question, what does God want me to do in response? What does he expect from me? So use that word speck. I speck, this is what you want. Speck, the letter S, the letter P-E-C. These are the four options that we have for our application. If you can think of more or you can think of a better you know, acronym, more power to you. 
but let's use this one for now. What does God speck of us? S, sins to avoid. Is he teaching me in the text to avoid a certain sin? P, is there a promise that I'm to claim? Is there something here that he promised and I can say, God, I claim this right now. E, is there an example that is being given that I'm supposed to follow? Am I, am I supposed to follow in these footsteps? Am I supposed to do this? C, is there a command that God wants me to obey? In that third question, what does God want me to do in response to what he told me about me, what he told me about himself, what am I supposed to do? Is there a sin to avoid? Is there a promise to claim? Is there an example to follow? Is there a command to obey? Spec. One of those will be your application. So if you're teaching a Bible study or, or giving a, a small talk, focus in on one of those. Let's look at the text together and see which one applies. So I'm looking at the text right now. And as I look at it, I, I don't really see a whole lot of obvious sin that I'm supposed to avoid. Are there any promises that I want to claim? Yes. Look at verse 5. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. I claim that one. God, when I am in trouble, I, I claim that promise that you are going to hide me, that you will conceal me, that you will take me in, you will protect me when enemies are after me and I have no hiding place and they're going to do me harm. I claim the promise that you are going to hide me in your shelter, conceal me under your cover. So is there any examples to follow? Well, maybe the shouting of joy, singing and making melody, just, just like David here, he sang and, and had joy. That, maybe that's my example. Instead of see, sitting here being all upset and depressed because my world is falling apart, maybe I recognize this, this incredible blessing God has given me to hide in Him, to be in His presence, and to respond, even though things are going difficult, with joy, with worship. So, is there any commands to obey? Well, I, I don't see anything here that he is demanding. Maybe you will, but just on, you know, just looking at it. But, but I think I found some application. Notice how these questions are helping us draw out from the text. So I'm hoping that you are journaling down your ideas. I'm hoping that you are saying God's word back to God in your prayers. Just repeat that to God, or you're sharing what God is revealing to you with others. Again, please, I'm asking you, on the comments below, give God a word of gratitude. Just, just allow yourself to break out of your shell and say, God, thank you for whatever it is he's teaching you. Share with us. We want to know what is God revealing to you through the scriptures. You know, I've heard so many times people say, you know, God told me. Number one, please don't say that. You don't want to go around telling people that God's talking to you. What you want to say is say, hey, I, God is teaching me through his scriptures. He is revealing to me through his scriptures. When you run across people who tell you, God told me, be careful with that. But, but do pay attention when we're talking about what God is revealing through his scriptures. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pray. And, and we're going to reflect God's words back to him in our prayers. So would you close your eyes with me? Would you bow your heads? Let, let, let me lead us in a word of prayer based on the psalm that we're reading. It's my reflection. My reflection was telling you what I found. My reflection was journaling, writing. I'm not done with that yet. I'm still going to spend some time on the text. And it's in telling God his own words back to him. Let's pray together. Please close your eyes, bow your heads. Lord, I want to thank you for that one thing that never, ever fails me. It's the promise 
that I claim that when I am in trouble, when the enemies in this world are after me, when I am afraid, I can run to you and you open your doors of your temple, your shelter, your tent. You always take me in. You hide me in your very presence and you lift me up like a child and put me in a high place far from the enemy's reach. Thank you, God, for giving me such a secure place to grow. And Lord, my special prayer right now is please never let my heart grow cold to your hospitality. Never let me take for granted the deep and profound sacrificial love that you give towards me each and every day. Fill me with desire to see the beauty of your face. Help me to see your characteristics, your kindness, your long suffering, your patience, your, your hospitality, and let that be beautiful to me. Lord, give me a passion to always want to be in your presence. Thank you for being my God, Lord. Thank you for being my hiding place, and thank you for being the first voice in my day. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, thanks for participating with me. We took a second step. Tomorrow, we're going to look at the next few verses, and we're going to continue to build. And I am asking you, please practice this. The more you practice, the better you'll get. You've learned some good lessons. We're going to build on this. You know, we read the text. We take some time to reflect on it. We journal. We think. And we ask three questions. What does it say about me? What does it say about God? What does God want me to do in response to this? In response to this, we have spec. We look for sins to avoid, promises to claim, um, examples to follow, and commands to obey. And then we pray. We tell God. We, we tell him his own words back in a spirit of gratitude. Well, like always, folks, I, I hope that you subscribe to the channel, push the like button, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for the next segment, part three of this series on habits of grace. God bless you, and remember, I'm always pulling for you. You're listening to AP for You. To support this ministry with a tax deductible donation, please click the link in the description or go to our webpage at www.alwayspollingforyou.org.